Greetings fanboys and fangirls, Jared here with another video review from Fanboys Forever. Today I'm bringing you a long awaited review. Uh, for me personally, I've really been looking forward to this figure but didn't know if I would ever be able to get him. But it is the Mezco 112 Collective Shadow figure. It's been a while since I've reviewed one of the Mezco 112 Collective figures. And uh, the Shadow, when they announced it, it was definitely a dream release. However, at the time, there was really no way I could pre-order it. And so I missed out on that initial batch from Mezco. Thankfully, sometimes, even though this was a Mezco store exclusive, every now and then, Big Bad Toy Store will get in a shipment of these a couple of months after the initial release. Thankfully, that same thing happened with the Shadow. It only lasted for an hour or two when they did get in that stock, but I was definitely Johnny on the spot to grab it as soon as I could. And before we begin, be sure if you haven't subscribed to go ahead and do so. It's a great way to keep up with me and the latest videos that I make here on the channel. Also, be sure to like the video if you end up liking the content that you see here today. With all that out of the way, let's begin. So first a little bit about what the Shadow even really is. The Shadow definitely falls under the category of one of those icons of American pop culture that we've probably all seen or seen references to or seen as image somewhere, but a lot of us probably don't even realize very much about him or who he is exactly. The Shadow predates Batman and Superman by nearly a decade, and he's not exactly a superhero, but really more of a pulp hero. And when I say pulps, I mean uh, the old magazines that would come out that would contain long form kind of prose stories that would have the cool paintings on them uh, about different heroes and detective stories and ghost stories and things like that. But really the Shadow also finds his roots in radio as well, uh, as the Shadow was kind of the mysterious host of a radio hour of um, kind of an anthology of mystery stories and it was all designed to promote the uh, pulp magazine that the company also owned. Eventually this led to the Shadow himself being far more popular than any of the mystery stories that they were promoting. One last little tidbit, the Shadow was also famously played by Orson Welles uh, when he was younger on several radio appearances, and those are really thrilling to listen to. If you've never heard them, you can find them easily on YouTube. Uh, Batman takes a few elements from the Shadow. Uh, he has a secret identity as a wealthy socialite, Lamont Cranston, and uh, he uses the power to cloud men's minds to exploit the criminal superstitious kind of tendencies to make them afraid of this mysterious figure that stalks the night and of course is seeking justice for uh, the little guy. Many of my viewers uh, probably know The Shadow best from the old Alec Baldwin movie from the mid-90s and that's a movie that I have a real fondness for uh, even though I've heard some people be pretty harsh to it in the modern era so I don't really know what that's about but I, I really do think it's a great movie. The Shadow has also enjoyed a long and illustrious career in several different comic books um, and of course over many different publishing companies. So The Shadow isn't what you would classify as a DC or a Marvel character or an image character or anything like that. Truly The Shadow can be found in all sorts of different versions based on the licensing and the deals that the owners of the property make. Of course The Shadow will be public domain here in a few years so I guess by then any of us can use The Shadow as we see fit which could be an exciting time. All right, with all that out of the way, let's finally get to the figure itself. You can see I've just kind of rigged together a, um, a little kind of layer for the shadow here. Of course, I have some you know, like kind of uh, nods to Asian uh, religion, Asian spiritualism in the background because the shadow is kind of a student of all of the uh, sort of older philosophies and things that he uses, uh, kind of the forgotten sciences to cloud men's minds and. Um, you know, hypnotism and spiritualism and you name it. Probably a lot of very outdated ideas about other parts of the world from this time in history, but hey, that was, you know, that was part of who he was. All right, so let's have a look. I'll just first get a closer look at the figure itself. Uh, this is very much not owing to the Alec Baldwin version or anything like that. This is very much the pulp magazine kind of cover version of the shadow. With the best comparison I could make being any of the cover paintings that you've seen of the character. Uh, of course, there's a lot of different layers to look at with this figure, so I'm going to start with him fully dressed in his entire outfit. All right, now that his cape is back, you can see what we have going on here. The shadow is wearing kind of a traditional suit with an overcoat and then a waistcoat, slacks, and shoes right here. What I like is that there's so much being crammed in here. They didn't skimp on anything, and this is at such a small scale, you know, this is a six inch scale figure, 
or 12th scale as we would call it. Usually there's definitely some compromises, but not here. This is the full suit of clothes that you would expect the shadow to be wearing underneath, even going further than I probably would have had I been, been in charge of developing this figure. So I think that's awesome and we'll definitely get down to looking at uh, the other layers of those clothes a little bit later because you can indeed kind of strip these down as you go to get a better look at the undersuit beneath and essentially get them down to just Lamont Cranston with the shadow's face. It's kind of the regular shoes that you expect with a Mezco release and it has the peg holes at the bottom. On the back you can see the cape billows very nicely. It has a wire in it and of course it has a red lining. I do think the shadow is very much in need of the red lining because it is a signature of the character. So I'm really, really glad to see that. One, the main way that you can utilize the scarf is just the wired scarf that it comes with. Of course, he also comes with his face covering piece, but this option doesn't utilize uh, this part at all. Instead, you just use the wired scarf to go around the face as many times as you need to, and then have it end in a dramatic flare. Or, of course, you could always just lay it down over the shoulder. Uh, this is a great, great looking option. And I didn't think it would look as good as it did. So that's why through a lot of this review, you'll see me just using like the more of the bandit mask right here instead. But I was actually shocked by how good this looked. So uh, don't mistake me not using it for it not being a great option because this really does look good. And like I said, you can also kind of lay it down if you need to, to get a less windswept look. So it's a little less dramatic. The scarf is definitely an interesting piece because this is actually a two piece thing going on. You can actually see that there's this kind of stretchy fabric that I have around the head and it's all just one piece that stretches around and under it there is a wired uh, scarf and it creates the illusion that it's all one piece if you put it on there correctly and I just love that. Also uh, the shadow does come with a variety of head sculpts. My favorite one is the one that I'm starting out with and if I just pop the head off He's making an absolutely menacing smile uh, to any poor bad guy that would try to cross his path or uh, hurt some innocent person. The hat does not come off, which is probably for the best because it would have led to an oversized hat. So I think this looks really cool. Then he comes with a more neutral expression right here. And uh, I think they've done a really good job of capturing the shadow's features with his long pointy nose. And so I think that looks terrific as well. There's one more head that's included, and this is what they call the pulp art style head. And the big difference, as you can see from before, is that this hat is way more wide brimmed and kind of taller. It looks more like, say, a pilgrim's hat or something like that. And it's way more in line with the artwork that we saw uh, on some of those old magazine covers. I'll use that head to show you that it's perfectly possible if you don't want to use the section that goes around the face and you just want them to have a red scarf with the mask down. There's plenty of instances in adapted media where the shadow looks something like this, where he's got, you know, part of his cape up hiding his face. It's not necessarily about the scarf. You can see the cape is actually completely removable. This is handled with just a clip right here. And all you have to do is just unbutton that and voila. Now, the cool thing is that you have these elastic bands right here that hold it onto the shoulders so that that cape isn't gonna go anywhere and you don't have to worry about it sliding around up here. So I like that. And this is the one that has the more traditional hat. And uh, this gives you a better idea of what the actual suit looks like underneath the cape and everything. I think it's a really nice look. I actually think Mezco would do well to sell some kind of pack of characters that was wearing a suit just like this because a lot of people are looking for something like this for Bruce Wayne. Uh, sans handgun holsters, of course, but still. Speaking of those, uh, this is a really cool accessory. Of course, the shadow, unlike Batman or a lot of uh, those kinds of characters, is packing always, and he's uh, not afraid to take somebody out. So you can see that he totally has his harness ready to roll. But, you know, he's not the Punisher or anything like that. Okay, the other thing is that you can totally remove this overcoat if you wish. To me, it would be kind of difficult to thread it back through appropriately and get it back through this thing and all that. So to me, it's not very important to take it off. I'm sure there's been lots of other reviewers who have taken this thing off. Uh, I don't really care about that because I don't see myself getting the shadow, you know, down to just a, a regular suit and just kind of wandering around. But what you can do, if you wish, is there's been plenty of times in comics and things where the shadow is not wearing his cape and is in more of just a suit. So you can actually just take the scarf portion I was talking about earlier and we'll go ahead and put it over the bottom of the head. It's kind of tricky to do this the first couple of times. So now I have it stretched out over it. Throw this on there. 
and the shadow simply does not feel like getting all that garb on and he's instead ready to roll just like this and when the shadow is not completely absorbed in his duties fighting the criminal element here he is hosting his radio show <laughs> only the shadow knows he's maybe encouraging the kids to get a shadow decoder ring speaking of his ring here is actually the uh, sculpting that shows the shadow's ring indeed right there and you can find that on every one of the left hands for the character uh, speaking of left hands i'll just show you real quick i'm definitely not the guy that's going to go through every single hand because i think that's boring as all get out here's most of the hands he comes with you can see there's kind of a variety going there of gripping hands and he also has two fisted hands that he comes outfitted with by far the most interesting one is this one where the shadow is dispersing some kind of flashbang right here from this hand and i just think that's awesome looking and we'll look at that later posed up with him while we're on the subject of accessories the shadow also comes with a spare a set of holsters here the only thing i can probably guess is it looks like this one that i had on him is a little bigger and meant for you to put on when he's wearing his whole overcoat and everything because it's you know it's kind of larger to accommodate the bulk of the coat and it looks to me like this one is thinner and smaller for when you don't have the whole overcoat on and just have the suit jacket on. So I, I don't know. You tell me. Either way, those holsters do accommodate uh, two handguns that the Shadow comes with. You know, kind of a timeless uh, look right here. You can see that, that this actually goes back at the top if you want. And you can pull it forward so it does have a sliding action, which is awesome. And at the bottom, you can take out the cartridge or magazine. Forgive me, I don't know anything about guns and uh, you can pop it back in so i think that's terrific as well the shadow does come with a couple of different effects pieces that can easily be attached to his weapons tiny little effect that i've not seen as much of from mezco and instead of having the more dramatic uh, this is a little bit smaller and it works really well for those shots where the shadow is feeding cr the criminal element a steady diet of lead of course, my personal favorite is the Shadow's Tommy gun right here. That's right, the Shadow is packing with a huge machine gun that he has of the era, and it comes with the big uh, magazine right here, or barrel, whatever you want to say, that you attach and can be detached, and it comes with an extra one of those. And keep in mind that you also have this awesome effects piece, which is, of course, uh, pretty familiar to those of us that have collected Mezco stuff for a while, but still just as effective as ever. Of course, the shadow looks absolutely awesome wielding that Tommy gun, so that is another option for display. Another cool accessory that the shadow comes with is this cool communicator type of thing, and you can see an image of someone that he's talking to right there, and it even has this little uh, section for him to talk on, and you can fold it out like an accordion. This feels pretty fragile. It doesn't feel like it's going to bust right away or anything, but it can move here, it can move here, and you can just pull it out. So it's really cool. I think it's an awesome piece. It's the kind of thing that I'm going to definitely try and keep from breaking, uh, but I still think it looks really great. Of course, like I said, the shadow is into some really big mysticism, and there's this cool kind of crystal ball that has a skull inside, so I think that's a great touch. Honestly, though, probably the coolest accessory he comes with is the Twin Scales of Justice here. Uh, this is an amazing little accessory uh, it just kind of holds up here and the figure can hold it too just like any accessory and on one side you have you know criminals and hooligans and gangsters and on the other side you have the police and it's kind of you know you can actually move it so here we have the shadow all dressed back up in his cape and his scarf and so here you can see his effect hand that i'd mentioned earlier and i think that's really cool looking especially if you have it angled down like this like he's throwing down a smoke grenade or something like that one final accessory I didn't really think to mention is the display stand that these Mezco figures usually come with. And it's pretty simple. And of course the posing arm and the little baggie where you can put extra accessories. And before we wrap up the review, I will show you just a little bit of articulation. Just so you know, for this articulation section, I won't be doing it in the more traditional way where I undress uh, the figure down to where he's a little e more easily able to move. I think that most of the people watching this video has probably seen how the regular Mezco buck body works at this point. I think the far more interesting thing to do is to look at how it will move with everything on, which is how most of us, I think, are gonna be displaying this guy. So let's go ahead and do that and see just how limited a lot of these uh, clothing options really make the articulation. With the head, it's really not that limited because of the scarf or anything like that or the wrap. So really, you can go up about that high, you can go down about this much, you can go all the way around. So you're not gonna find that there's a whole lot of limitation there. 
Instead, what you will find is that you, you're constantly messing with it, you know, trying to get it just right, which is great because, you know, it gives you a lot of options. Now, with the arms, of course, you can roll the cape back like this, and because it has posing wire in it, then it works out pretty well. And you also find that you uh, constantly get little pieces of dust and things on the coat. Since it's black, it shows up really easily, so that's something to be aware of. So with the arm, this is probably where it's the most limited if you're keeping this big overcoat on, like I am. Uh, you can get it up about this high, I guess. And so it's not that bad. Now, if I wanted to, I could probably continue twisting the fabric and have it go up higher, but it is pretty limited. Now, if I work at it a little bit to the side, there's a hinge. It can go up about that much. And you can bring it in pretty good, even with the gun holsters iron. And uh, it is double jointed in the elbow and it exposes a whole lot of the skin right there, but that's okay because I think that's a nice look, especially if he's kind of rearing back, ready to punch a bad guy. And using the fisted hands, we can get some good old fashioned fisty cuff poses right here. And uh, yeah, this definitely looks like he's about to get in a uh, 30s slash 40s kind of brawl with uh, some mobsters or something. So I think that looks pretty cool. Not only that, but there is a rotation there at the bicep. There's a rotation at the wrist. There's hinges that go up and down so that he can pose with the guns a little easier. There is a diaphragm joint that you can work at pretty good. There is a waist swivel. There's also some really, really good legs here because you're not gonna find that any of this is limited whatsoever by the pants because it's just one layer of fabric. Uh, you can get the splits really well. You can go out really far. There's also a rotation here at the leg. You can get a double joint right there at the knee, no problem. You can see that they've added some really nice uh, high socks right here that are just sculpted on. Of course, that's, you know, in keeping with the time. Which was the style at the time? So I think that that works really well. You can also see where he's able to uh, bend at the ankle and he can get that ankle rocker pivot for some really wide poses. And he can flat foot those poses. No problem. You will find that he is a little heavy because of the uh, cloak, but really it still works out pretty good. Another little bonus area that you have is there's some integrated posing wire in the back of uh, the overcoat here. So you can do some interesting things with effects. And then in my personal head canon, I do believe that Batman could have met the shadow and worked with him had the events of the original Batman stories in the late thirties happened during that time. Uh, so here we can just use the Ascending Knight figure that Mezco did all those years ago. And uh, there you go. You have a team up with a Shadow kind of in his later years and a Batman in his early years with him showing Batman the ropes of detective work. Uh, at least that's my own personal headcanon. <laughs> you know, for years and years, I really hoped that some company would come along and really give the Shadow his due when it comes to making a really nice six inch scaled figure like this. And I'm happy to say that I think this is the best a company has ever done when it comes to doing the shadow justice. As a matter of fact, I think this might be the first and only six inch uh, shadow figure, but it's certainly not the only shadow figure as he's had a um, long history, especially dating back to the Alec Baldwin film with Kenner toys. And also there was a sixth scale, like 12 inch figure a few years ago, but I think that this pretty easily surpasses it, uh, not only in terms of tailoring, but also in terms of head sculpts and things like that. So I do think that there is a whole lot to love here. In terms of if there could have been anything else or if they could have done anything else for this figure, uh, I probably would have traded out one of the heads for just a regular standard Lamont Cranston head, you know, sans hat or anything like that. I think to me that would have been preferable. But honestly, other than that, I'm not sure what else they could have done. It's probably something I'm not thinking of right now. But uh, let me know down in the comments if there's anything else that you think that the shadow could have included because it's, uh, to me, I'm just not thinking of anything right off the bat. Now, unfortunately, like I said, I did have to pay a premium to get this guy a little bit of one anyway, as uh, Big Bad, you know, can do a little bit of a markup on something like a Mezco exclusive. But I was just glad to get the opportunity to finally get the guy. Uh, I do wish that Mezco hadn't made this a limited exclusive. I think Mezco is really missing the boat when it comes to not having things as more of just a standby product on the website. It's definitely the ball is in Mezco's court if they want to make more of these. I definitely think they should. You never know, we may see some kind of variant of this guy coming down the pipeline. Uh, I would hope that they could come up with a meaningful variant to do of the shadow. I'm not really sure what else you do after this because to me, this is pretty much the definitive shadow. If they can come up with a way to refresh this guy, that's awesome. Uh, I certainly can off the top of my head. Either way, it's an awesome figure and uh, highly suggested. It's incredible. 
And like I said, of course, comment down below. Let me know what you think about this guy. And as always, God bless you and yours. And I'll see you on Fanboys Forever. Fanboy out. <laughs>